I'm a consultant cardiologist, and uh, I fix broken hearts uh, for a living. But if you're really lucky, uh, I help to keep your heart healthy as well. These are my parents, uh, my late parents, and if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here um, um, talking to you today. Uh, it was their belief in me that helped me to get where I am. My father had many pearls of wisdom, uh, and I would like to dedicate this talk uh, to them, but I would like to share one pearl of wisdom that he gave me, which was, when you get to the top, don't forget to send a lift down for the next person. Today, I'm pressing that button and sending a lift down and allowing other people to learn how to be successful. So, um, ba uh, basically, um, um, I uh, want you to now imagine, uh, I want you to, you to basically um, play a little game with me, and I want you, you to imagine what it's like to be seven years old again. For some of us, that's not so long, and in some people, that's quite a long time ago. I want you to imagine what clothes you wore, and I want you to imagine what your favorite toy was, what your favorite game was, uh, what did you like to do, what were you thinking at that time? Well, for me, um, I was actually thinking about becoming a doctor. Not, a, not a, an actor, not a pilot, not an astronaut, and certainly not a, not, not a pop star perish the thought. So what child normally thinks uh, at the age of seven they want to be a doctor? What circumstances um, uh, do you think might have led me to, th uh, and what events might have led me to becoming a doctor? Well, my memory is a bit vague, but when I was about four or five years old, I was very ill, and I was admitted to hospital, and apparently at one point uh, the doctor said to my family, we've done everything we can and the rest is in uh, the hands of God. All I can remember uh, was I wanted my mum. I was very poorly. And um, as I was getting better, I remember one day uh, my uncle came to visit me. Uh, and he came in a brand new black pinstripe suit. Little, uh, unfortunately, that day I had the runs. And he lacked that vital piece of information. And he picked me up. And the rest, as they say, is history. So I eventually got better, and I got home, and eventually started my schooling. But I, I really struggled at school. Uh, I had been ill, I'd missed a lot of time off school, and I had some ongoing health problems. So it, life was really hard, but life just got harder. Um, so in those days, people didn't like you to use your left hand. So I was told I had to use my right. Why? This is how it's done. Aren't there pens for right hand, uh, left handed people? Aren't there scissors? No, just get on with it. Initially, it was very frustrating, but uh, later on in my uh, uh, life, I found it actually quite helpful to be good, good with both hands. So um, I found it helpful in my sports, playing football, cricket, and also felt it uh, uh, helpful in, in my future career uh, as, as a cardiologist. So just before my eighth birthday, I had. Uh, the gift of my first pair of glasses. Uh, so things are getting worse, and um, obviously wearing glasses uh, at such a young age uh, made school life a bit harder, but at least I could now see clearly. And I realized that, uh, yes, there were benefits of wearing glasses, but I think my parents also got fed up of replacing them every time I broke them, especially playing sports, especially at that such a young age. I soon began to realize that even though I could now see normally, I saw things in a different way. I didn't see things in the conventional way. So I remember doing an experiment uh, at school. So it was a Petri dish, and uh, it's full of agar, and we inoculate it with microbes. And we plot the growth of microbes uh, on a graph, and we watch the growth as they consume the nutrients we watch the plateau and then the decline as uh, the toxins build up, the food finishes, uh, and uh, the poisons start to accumulate the waste products. So I was very upset by this. Um, and I looked around at my classmates, and they were all very happy. And at the end, I went to my school teacher, and I said to her, is this what's going to happen to our planet? And all I got told was, shut up, don't be so stupid. Um, and uh, 
that always sort of um, stuck in my mind. So as you can see, there's lots of barriers that are being put in my way. When I got to high school, um, um, my urge to become a doctor started to become stronger and stronger, uh, almost irresistible. It was like a hunger. And you know, we had that demonstration earlier on about holding your breath. It was like that. I just could not wait to become a doctor. And for some reason, which I still don't fully understand till today, it came into my mind at the age of 11, I wanted to be a cardiologist. The problem was, at school, my teacher said, you've had lots of time off school, you're weak, um, you've got gaps in your knowledge, we don't think you're gonna do that well academically. And I found that very upsetting, um, I um, found I was very angry about it, and I was thinking, why can't they see my potential? Why can't they help me rather than to block me? And I remember, lying at night thinking about this, and a thought came into my mind. There are things in life you can control, um, and there are other things you can't control, and obviously I can't control what my teachers think. So I decided to box their opinions off, and I decided I would try to work on the things I could control. So I started to work uh, harder, uh, I became more organized, I became uh, more, um, um, determined that I wanted uh, to, uh, to you know, fulfill my dream and, and be a cardiologist. But I also realized that uh, I needed a strong why. You know, these thoughts had come into my mind and the thought of helping people, I didn't really think cut the mustard. I, I needed a, a much stronger why. So I, I would imagine, that just like the movies, someone having a heart attack they would be cl clutching uh, their chest, they would be sweating, um, they, they would be feeling sick, nauseous, the life was being sucked out of them. And then I would imagine what their arteries looked like, um, all clogged up um, and no blood flow down the coronary arteries. And then I would imagine, as if by a miracle, that artery was open again. So this was not just the restoration of blood flow, it was a restoration of a lifeline. It was a restoration of uh, damage, stopping the damage to the heart, and possibly stopping uh, someone dying. But this was someone, uh, wasn't someone, he was someone's husband, he was someone's father, he was someone's son, he was a breadwinner. He may have had lots of other links. So just by saving one life, you had an impact on a huge number of people. And that was my visualization. Every time the path got hard for me, this is what I'd think about, and it kept me going. The next step uh, was more of a conceptual uh, step for me. Um, at the age of 11, I didn't know much about being a doctor, let alone um, what it was like to be a cardiologist. But to me, it, sound, it, looked, it felt like a massive step um, and I thought, how do I conceptualize this? How do I break this down? How do I get to my target? So I decided to break it down into three huge steps. My first step was to get into medical school. Second step was to graduate. And my third step was to become a, a consultant cardiologist. And then I thought, those are still very huge steps. So I decided to break them down in my mind as a staircase of lots of small manageable steps and I decided to work backwards. So my first goal was that obviously to get into medical school. Without that, I couldn't uh, achieve anything. So I started to ask myself, what A-levels do I need to do? What grades do I need to get? How many do I need to do? And then I worked back, what GCSE should I do to allow me to help me uh, get those A-level grades? How many do I need to do? What grades do I need to get? And then I made a plan of how to try to get, achieve those grades. So, um, it was still a lot of hard work to, to do, and uh, I started to make progress, and uh, I think the teachers started to see progress. And then I had a bit of a bombshell. So I had some friends who were a lot senior to me, and they all wanted to be doctors, and none of them got in. And I looked to them uh, with respect. They were better than I was, and I was trying to aspire to what they were, but they couldn't get into medicine. And that really shook me. It brought fear into my mind. And then I realized um, that uh, I had to uh, up my game even more. 
and I started to compare things. So I started to compare, compare myself to them. Uh, how could I improve on their performance? I also started to compare myself with the peers, but it wasn't just all my peers. I just picked the people who were at the top of my, my, my class, and I started to m measure everything. How many hours did I sleep? How many hours did I study? How, many time, uh, how much time did I spend playing football, watching TV? I started to look at my revision hours, uh, but then I started looking at, was I better at revising uh, in the morning, um, afternoon, evening, late at night? Uh, whether I was better um, re revising early hours in the morning when everyone was asleep? And I was also looking at my exam te technique, uh, and uh, um, I uh, honed this in uh, time and time and time again. Um, and after a, a lot of very, very hard work, um, I managed to get several offers from uh, medical schools, even without an interview. Um, and uh, that was uh, a massive uh, relief for me, and I knew I was on my way to becoming a consultant cardiologist. By a lot of measures, I, I am successful, um, but I still have some regrets. What are those regrets? Well, I actually wish I'd made more goals. I, miss, I wish those uh, goals were broader, harder to achieve. I wish I'd actually enjoyed the journey more and I was allowed to enjoy, enjoy the journey uh, more. And uh, also, I wish I had a mentor, somebody who could have guided me, saying, this is what you need to do. I didn't have any support from my teachers. I had to work out th things for myself, and I'm sure I would have probably achieved things much quicker. And it was interesting, even during my medical school and also on the way to becoming a cardiologist, I didn't actually have anyone who said, look, I'll show you how to get there. So um, I have some pieces uh, of uh, advice to give you. Um, and um, the first thing I would say to you is think different, think again. I would ask you to all go away and analyze your life, and then I would like you to actually make some goals. Um, not just one goal, I want you to make several goals in different domains. So it may be career, it may be your personal relationship, uh, your health, and we're gonna be having a, a talk on health later on as well. It may be financial, whatever. It may be how to play the piano. Uh, so whatever those goals are, uh, make those goals, make those commitments, but then I w after you've done that, I want you to visualize those goals. Unless you visualize it, your why you want to do things, you're not gonna achieve it as quickly as if you have that strong visu visualization. I would also uh, remind you that the only thing that is holding you back is your imagination and how big you can dream. So I want you to aim high uh, as high as you can dream. Uh, I want you to keep going. I don't want you to give up. Um, and I want you to have belief in yourself. Now, before I reveal the secret in my box, um, I've just got uh, one more slide to show you. And that is, don't be an egg uh, that shatters at the first hurdle. Be strong, carry on. And be a tennis ball, bounce off your failures, and go forward. Thank you very much.